Hello, welcome back to the vlog. I hope you're all doing well. You joined me back up in Scotland, north of the border, where I drove up to Aberdeen yesterday to commission four heat pumps on housing association properties. It was an interesting one. I uh, set off at 5 a.m. and it was minus four, so I thought, crikey, here we go. We're gonna be testing these heat pumps at design conditions from day one. All work to treat, all 21 degrees, all ten tenants happy, so we're really happy with that, jobs are good. And I spent the night in a hotel in Perth last night, and I've just nipped over to Atherley Estates, which is part of the Blair Castle Estate, where we're doing some of the estate properties, just to do a final site survey. Anyway, that's what I'm on with. But today's video is about the recent announcements by the government of the change of planning permission or permitted development rights on heat pumps. So I've been wanting to make this video since the announcement, but I've been a bit busy. So what I'm gonna do is just cover what has changed, what, what, what we currently have and, and, and how it's changed and how it's gonna help us uh, with the rollout of heat pumps. Now, just to caveat this, I'm, I'm not talking from a position of authority at all. I, I, I'm talking as an installer, as an MTS installer, who, who gets to read the information and then give it back out to my customers, to you guys here, and, um, and just to help installers and customers understand what's gonna change. But please do read the documentation yourself. Please make your own mind up and, and make sure you are compliant uh, with planning laws in your area. So yeah, if you haven't liked and subscribed so far, if you can do, please do it. It gives me motivation to uh, keep making the videos and I do enjoy doing them and I hope you enjoy them. If you've got any comments, positive or negative, that's cool with me. I'm giving you my opinion and you have the right to give me yours. Just fire them below. I do try and get back to everybody. It does sometimes become a thread. Uh, so I do lose track and, uh, and, and, and don't keep on top of it at times. So I do apologize for that. Appreciate all the emails too. I am getting back to people slowly. So yeah, let's have a chat about it. So for you guys that are installers that don't install heat pumps, that aren't MCS registered, and for you guys that are homeowners that are interested in heat pumps, I'll just quickly go through where we stand with planning permission as it stands. I'll do each point and then what is gonna change on it. So essentially at the moment, heat pumps come under permitted development in certain conditions. So you don't need to apply for planning permission to install a heat pump. The government decide the planning laws and then as it stands, MCS have their own document. So MCS is the micro certification scheme which governs micro renewables essentially. So small wind turbines, heat pumps that are at anything under 45 kilowatts, biomass boilers, solar panels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So MCS have their own document, their own standard for permitted development, and it's called MCS 020. So that's the document. You can give it a Google, it is open for any, anybody to view. Now that document is a calculation method for wind turbines, small wind turbines and air source heat pumps. They are gonna split that document so it'll be specific for wind turbines and specific for um, heat pumps. I think they're gonna call it A and B. Now, air source heat pump permit development, the first rule as it stands, the first one that we look at is the one meter rule. What we mean by that is all air source heat pumps have gotta be a meter from the boundary to get permitted development. So from your property boundary to the edge of the heat pump, we've got to have a meter. Now, historically, that causes problems on smaller houses that don't have a lot of uh, room at the rear of them. So if you imagine a terrace house, to be able to stay a meter from the boundary can be challenging at times. Now, that rule's going. So from early next year, that rule's gonna go, we will be able to put air source heat pumps up to a boundary. Now there's other stipulations that are gonna follow from that that I'll talk about in a second, but I'm happy about that rule. It's gonna make life a lot easier. That example of terrace houses is one. The second one is sometimes, like the property I've just viewed there, they had an oil tank at the boundary. Now, as it stands, I've had to say to them, we're gonna remove your oil tank, but we can't fit the heat pump where the oil tank is because it's within a meter of the boundary. And they're like, that's crazy. We've got a three cubic meter oil tank and you're gonna put a 0.6 cubic meter heat pump in and we can't put it at the boundary. Sadly, as it stands, that's the case, but it's going and it's gonna help us out massively because when it comes to planning permission, it can be the tipping point whether somebody will get a heat pump or not. If we've got to apply for planning permission, that's obviously a process that takes time. There's a cost attached to it. 
and it can stop people making the decision to decarbonise their home. So, removing the one metre rule is going to help us out. Now, I will stress, installers must remain responsible. You know, if, if, if we are going to put it at the boundary, make sure that we know where the boundary is so we don't have any issues. Because that was the beauty of the one metre rule. It was rare you got into a boundary dispute. Boundaries, historically, I, I know this from working in the building game for years, can drift over time. People have arguments over them. So just be super careful as an installer to know that you've got it written down, you've got the deeds or some evidence that you know where the boundary is. Anyway, that's a positive. I'm really happy about that. Second thing that's changed. As it stands currently, we can only fit heat pumps up to 0.6 cubic meters in volume. So that's the size of the heat pump. So under permitted development. So anything above 0.6 cubic meters immediately requires planning permission. Now, this might come as a bit of a shock to some installers and to some developers. Essentially, any of your twin fan units, well, most good quality makes of twin fan units are bigger than 0.6 cubic meters. So they all require planning permission. So if you've got a twin fan unit, now there is some that are smaller, I'm not gonna name names, but some of, the, some of them that are a bit thinner, um, are under the um, permit development uh, umbrella. Many of the good quality makes are bigger, so they all require planning permission. So there you go, they're removing it. Early next year, we're gonna be able to fit anything up to 1.5 cubic meters. And for me, that's a massive win because the smaller we make a heat pump, the faster we've got to move the air. The faster we move the air, the more noisy it is. So this relaxation allows us to fit bigger heat pumps that can be quieter. So that's a massive win, I like that one. The other thing that's changed is, at the minute, permit development only covers one heat pump. A lot of the time when we do detached properties, we'll need two heat pumps, or the other option's a hybrid system. So customers will often say, ah, if we've got to go for planning permission with two heat pumps, we'll just stick to a hybrid. Even if they prefer the idea of two heat pumps, that's being scrapped. Detached properties from early next year will be able to put two heat pumps on with um, under permitted development. So again, massive win, really pleased about that. Now, I'm gonna caveat everything I've just said with this new MCS 020 document that's gonna come out. Currently, the document on air source heat pumps has 10 steps to deciding whether it fits under the uh, permitted development rights or not. So essentially what you do is you take the decibel rating of the heat pump, you take the background noise, the average background noise that, that MCS give you, and you add all these numbers in, and then you measure from the assessment position, which is where the heat pump is, to the neighbor's nearest habitable window. And what they mean by that is any room that's not a kitchen or a bathroom or a utility space. So lounges, dining rooms, bedrooms, etc. And you measure that distance, and the further away you are, it reduces your decibel rating. And we essentially had to get that under 42 decibels. Now they have announced that they're reducing that down to 37 decibels which technically would mean your heat pump would have to be further away to adhere to the conditions of MCS 020. So I'm pretty sure that there's a few sections that are going to be removed out of it to stop that from happening because removing the one metre rule would be pointless if that was the case. So we're going to have to wait and see on the full MCS 020 uh, calculation that's going to come out next year. But yeah, on the whole, I'm really happy about it. It's going to help uh, help our installs, make life easier. Um, it'll be interesting to see that new MCS 020 document because I think they're going to be more specific on um, barriers, visual barriers and, and, sh and screens and things for hiding heat pumps. You'll not be able to use a hedge, for instance. It'll have to be an actual physical manufactured fence because obviously hedges change his state throughout the years throughout the year obviously autumn winter etc so yeah looking forward to it um seeing what happens and on the whole i'm really pleased the support the government are putting behind heat pumps and it should help the rollout so just a few other pointers on the planning permission um, and permitted development for heat pumps if your property has had its permitted development rights removed, then you would have to get planning permission anyway. Now that can happen if you have had an extension that the planning officer has said, you can have the extension, however, all permitted development rights are removed. So that might be the case, so you need to check that. 
certain world heritage sites have uh, and listed buildings have their own stipulations so you'll have to speak to listed building officers you'll have to speak to world heritage about whether you can install the heat pump on your house. World Heritage sites often require that you don't have the heat pump on the um, side of the house that faces the road. Uh, and there's other, a few other things. So, so ju ju just be mindful of that when you are looking at putting your heat pump on or if you're an installer, installing for a customer. But yeah, any questions that you've got on this subject, just, just fire them below. And like I say, I'm not sp speaking <laughs> As an authoritative figure, I'm just speaking as an installer of my experience of it from reading the documents, etc. So fire the comments below and we'll um, we'll try and answer. Kick the sheets like I'm on defense. Moon's too low and the money's all spent. If you want someone that's got